now that we have talked about Duke and Coach K, next man up, John Shire, handpicked by none other than Coach K, allegedly. I'm assuming <laughs> that's what they say. I don't know. It's just, you know, I don't know. Did, did Coach K pick him? I would have to assume so because this guy yeah. has no resume other than being a Duke player and a Duke assistant. And when you're talking about Duke, even though they hadn't won a championship since 2015, we're still talking about the Rolls Royce of college football. You don't just hand a Rolls Royce to a newly licensed driver. You get him a Honda first. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> hey, how did this come about, and is he the right guy? All right. Oh, man. Okay, now that I've done got my Homer bias out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and be an unbiased, realistic sports fan. All right. Do I think he was handpicked? Yes. I think Coach K, and, I, and I'll and i put it like this, because I really don't feel, I'm not going to waste a lot of time on did Coach K actually pick him or not, yes yeah. or no. I'll tell you why. If Coach K walks in, I mean, of course, there, you know, regardless of whether or not he was hand, he was actually handpicked, I'm sure Coach K's opinion was asked. I'm most, sure most they asked. So who, I mean, and the, the AD is outgoing. This is his last year. So I'm sure the AD's probably like, hey, Coach K, who you think? He probably said, we're going to hire John Shire. And the, co and the AD's probably like, okay, well, you know, I was thinking about this. What do you think? And Coach K probably stopped for a second wiped his face and said, we're going to hire John Shire. So that's how that conversation went. So <laughs> now, who's who's going to argue? You can't argue with the man. You can't. You can't argue with him. Oh, God. And, I mean, he's he he works the refs. Imagine if, you know, and a referee hears it from every coach, every game he ever, he ever officiates. So the fact that, imagine Coach K having that conversation with an athletic director. I'm yeah. sure it was just over and done with. Just as quickly as it began, it was over. So, yes, John Shire, I believe, at least, was handpicked, and that's why. Now, <laughs> John Shire is not the right man for the job. Coach K, yes, is the greatest college basketball coach of all time. However, he has his weaknesses just like everybody else. His weakness is assistant coaches. His former players. Yes. They're all former players. All of them. Never and an what, assistant that wasn't a former player. And what have they all got? And I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some, but the names off the top that I think of are Johnny Dawkins, who, by the way, was always the guy I thought was going to be the next head coach at Duke. I, I thought so, too. I thought so, too. I, that's, that's, I always thought, I always, I always fingered him to, figured him to be the guy. But Johnny Dawkins... Chris Collins, Steve Wojciechowski, and Jeff Capel, and now Nate James. And I'm sure there are others that I'm missing, but those are the names I think of of guys who have gone on and left the bench to go and be head coaches elsewhere. Yeah. Steve Wojciechowski was fired last year. Jeff Capel was fired and then came back and has now left again. Mm -hmm. And, not, I mean, he hasn't had a lot of time at Pitt, but Pitt is traditionally a decent basketball school. He's made some improvements. Chris Collins was kind of a flash in the pan. It's wor It worked in Northwestern. They made the tournament, and now it's kind of tailed off a little bit. But yeah. I'll give you some slack. Big Ten is a very good conference, tough conference. Yeah. Um, and Johnny Dawkins, who, again, I thought I figured him to be the next head coach, has done miserably at, Star at Stanford. It never worked. Yeah. So I, based on that track record, again, I'm probably missing some people, but based on that track record, I personally do not think – oh, and Nate James, again, it, it, Nate James has gone to some no-name small school who's – he's not going to do anything noticeable. Um, I don't – based on that track record, I don't trust Coach K when it comes to picking coaches. I just – I don't. John Shire, like you said, he's been handed the Rolls Royce of college basketball, and <laughs> I, I'm not sure – he, I mean, I, and the thing, what I don't like is this whole Duke always has an associate head coach. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Because you're not running the program. You're not associate, you're not assisting him 
run the program. You're just assisting with the basketball day-to-day -day operations. And Duke basketball is much bigger than one man. So at this point, I mean, it is Coach K. But once Coach K leaves, it's, there's no one else. It's not going to be – it's bigger than any one man. So I don't, I don't trust John Shire, and I think – once he gets into the thick of it, I'm afraid that it's going to be too much. It's going to be overwhelming. And he has no, he's never, he hasn't run a small program. How is he going to know how to run this? one? And he's calling the shots. He's calling the shots. There's no one else to call and look, look and look for or look to for an answer. I mean, it's all him. So for all the things that you said, like track record of assistance, Things of that nature. Uh, again, like you say, I think that's his weakness. He, he, you know, I can see him bringing back the, you know, former players, letting them, you know, trying to assume, teach him how to coach. But that didn't. Uh, yeah, it's not working very well. Um, and then, I, honestly, it's not good for John Shire, even if he's good. Let's say he is as good as the guy at Clemson. Let's say he's as good as that guy. That's not it's Brad not, Brownell. Brad Brownell. <laughs> Let's say he's as good as Brad Brownell. But this ain't Clemson. That's not good enough. This ain't Clemson. And that's a like, it's one thing to follow a guy at another school, like uh, Jay Wright at Villanova. I hate it for his replacement because he's had super success. But as for all the success he's had, Villanova isn't Duke. You bring John Shire, he's been an assistant for, I don't know, what, six, seven years? And this is Duke we talking about. And the fans at Duke, I mean, they don't care if you won them a national championship. You're the coach now. So when things start to go awry. <laughs> so, again, I don't, I'm not sure. It's not good for John. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I, I don't, I'm not sure if this was going to come up later. But I'll tell you now, because you said the name, you maybe you, you got the idea in my head. I was asked another the other day, I was sitting at work with my buddy when the ESPN breaking news notification dropped that Coach K was going to retire as of next year. And he asked me, he know I'm obviously a big dookie. They know that at work. That's not a secret. Yeah. He immediately turned to me and said, Who you want? Who's gonna be the next coach? I only I had two choices. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead. Who are your two choices? Who do you if, want? If if they would leave their program. Yes. Jay Wright and Mark Few. This so is, I never thought of Mark Few. This I, like, I like that a lot. <laughs> Wright was always my guy, and I'll tell you why. Number one, he and this for me, this has always been a big thing, and I think I, what I always wanted, because I, I, again, I straddle the fence on being a delusional Duke fan of Coach K is never aging. He's not going to retire. He'll be here forever. And then we need to start planning for the future. So I've always been kind of half and half. Um, so if, if I had my pick, I always said I wanted it to be Jay Wright. Because Jay Wright has, above all, he's got a lot of swag, dude. Bruh. He is a lot of swagger, man. And he just... That's something that the Duke program needs in a coach. They need a coach that can come in and kind of suck all the air out of the room. Command and, the room. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, he can get, he can coach one and done dudes because he's done it a little bit, but he also gets system guys. Yep. He is a good offensive coach. Villanova is traditionally a very good offensive team with some very good shooters, which Duke has lacked in the past few years which kind of co goes with your point of has Coach K really been coaching? Um, and then he also coaches defense very well. So he brings all of the elements. Plus, he's been there before, man. He's won a national championship. He's won two national championships. Yep. They, he's been there before. He's done it. He knows how to drive. And he's taken Villanova, which is traditionally a basketball school, but he's taken them to the upper echelon, the elite programs. He can do it. That was always my pick. Now, Mark Few is somebody who never crossed my mind. That's because I also – I think Gonzaga's irrelevant. I've always <laughs> – I hate them. If you can't – if you play at no other time than 1030 on ESPN, I don't want to talk to you. So, 
play at seven o'clock on Tuesday, and then we can have that conversation. Until Mark, then, Mark will be out there now, coaching, dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's okay. but he's he's getting some dudes now too. And, and the so, thing is, he is, and and it's showing because even though they lost the championship last year. They was running through everybody because now he has the guys, mm-hmm. but he was always in the mix when he didn't have anybody you had ever heard of. You know what yeah. I'm mean? saying? So, yeah. But Jay Wright, I like cool. Jay Wright because, as you know, you went on a couple of AAU trips with when I coached AAU. Uh-huh. I never had any real post guys. No. Jay Wright has never really had any real post guys. He was the no. first coach I saw that lined up and started four guards. Not like mm-hmm. a short three and a short four. He lined up four yeah. guards. And four guards. Po- true and guards. A, <laughs> true guards and a power forward and one a natty. And yeah. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. Especially now, I mean, outside of, I mean, think about the NBA. Outside of Joel Embiid. Mm. Um, what's if you're guy? talking true fives, true fives, Andre Drummond. Andre has- Drummond. Maybe DeAndre Ayton. He's more like a four playing five. Yeah. Um, you don't really. The game is a guard game now. So if I was going to replace Coach K, who better to do it than Jay Wright? Yeah. And the thing, like you said, the NBA is turning to it's an isolation game. It's a guard game. That's what it is. NCAA sports, just, just the NFL and college football is the same way. College sports are about five, six years behind. Yeah. Now at that five, six year mark of when the game has really trans gone into moved to an era of guard play, of isolation play, spot up shooting. That's what it's turned into. We're now five or six years moved on from when that change first happened in the NBA. That means college basketball is going to quickly move into that that translation as well. So I think you're right. I think Jay Wright. Jay Wright was always my pick. Always also said a realistic hire. Maybe a Shaka Smart. I was maybe. just about to say Shaka Smart. I think Shaka has gotten a bad little situation yeah. at Texas. Texas. Yes. Listen, for those that don't follow college sports, Texas, the University of Texas, but Texas is different. It's yes. like especially with basketball and football. You just mm-hmm. – I don't think he should have left um, – VCU. He VCU never to go, Not to go to Texas. It's just nope. like I don't feel like Charlie Strong should have left Louisville to go to Texas. Texas, nope. Texas boosters expect different. You know what I'm saying? Even if they don't have. Yep. You know, because it's, it's a lot of money Texas, in Texas. <laughs> yeah, Texas boosters are very uh, – they're almost borderline delusional as well. They think they're just the hottest thing out still, no matter what. They think we're Texas. Hook them. We're going to go out here. We're going to get us a bunch of dudes, and we're going to go out there, and we're going to win a natty. And that's just not Texas anymore. It doesn't matter who you are. You can't you can't do it off of legacy. You've got to no. do it every year. you got to do it, and you got to do it in the way you – we talked about it before we started recording. you kind of got to cater to these kids now. You got to give them what they want. Otherwise, they're just going to up and leave if they even come in the first place. You do. So you cater to them a little bit. It's not Texas in the way, like you said. It's not old school Texas. And that's why I think Shaco, I agree with you. I think he got a bad rap. And I think Texas being what Texas is now is different because at Duke, all he's got to do to get some of these guys is say, come play at Duke. Plus, not, he, he already has established place. pipelines on the East Coast from the VCU days. Just pop in a Back. couple of VCU tapes. As a matter of fact, he beat Duke at VCU. He did. He so, did. In the like, tournament, no less. In the tournament. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. But we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, like I say, when I'm not rooting for my dogs, I'm still going to pull for the Dukies. Uh, I hope John Shire don't make me go all the way away from Duke. <laughs> I'll I'll leave it with man. I hope I'm wrong. I hope nothing more than that. I'm wrong. I hope John Shire is great. Um, I wish him all. Obviously, I wish him nothing but success. Um, I I have a great. I mean, he's a he was a great player for us for four years. He's been. He seems to be very happy and accepting of the role. Um, he didn't seem nervous at the press conference or anything like that. He seemed like you know, hey, I'm I'm ready for this. Okay. Um, never know, but the guys that are going to be on his staff again are guys that started coaching around the same time he did. It's going to be Nolan Smith, 
it's going to be those guys who are Duke guys through and through. And I'm just afraid. I'm afraid it's not going to work. However, what gives me some encouragement is they are young guys, which means they are going to have a built-in rapport. They're going to be able to communicate with the, with the recruiting. Yeah. They're going to get it. Um, I think Duke's got problems bigger than just coach K leaving. Most definitely. Most definitely. I, I think that I think Duke's got problems. I think part of the problems are the student section. That's, you know, I think that's the home court advantage is not there. Um, mm-hmm. So I think hopefully a young coach, John Shire, I think they'll definitely be able to energize it, um, energize the fan base, energize the recruits, and they'll be able to communicate. So that gives me some hope. So nothing success, all hopes and prayers. I hope it goes well. We shall see. We shall see.